certified personal trainer, online coach, and today you will also dive into my life as a reality TV star. So what show was I on? I was on Big Brother Canada season six, which was now two years ago. And it's crazy and surreal to think that it was that long ago. It feels like just yesterday, but at the same time, looking back, so much has happened since. I'm finally ready to like, you know, open that door a little bit, talk a little bit about that chapter in my life. I feel like when I came out of the house, there were so many people that wanted to know as much as possible about my experience and my time in the house. But I felt like there was a bit of a barrier where I was super grateful for this love and support, but wasn't quite ready to open up and talk about it. And given everything that's just happened with Big Brother Canada season eight, uh, due to COVID-19, the season production having to be shut down early, you know, it really like struck a chord with me and I felt like so bad for all the house guests. I remember how much that experience meant to me and to have it cut short would have been devastating to me. So. I thought, you know what, I'm so grateful and so lucky to have been able to spend as much time in the Big Brother house as I did. And now is the time to, you know, talk about that experience and open up a little bit about it. So I'm doing a QA and a today, uh, all things regarding Big Brother and life after that. So if you are interested, be sure to keep watching. All right, let's dive right into it. Question number one, how many times did I audition for Big Brother Canada? Da, 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 three. I remember when I heard the news that it was finally coming to Canada, I was over the moon. I've been a huge fan of the show since season two of the American version. I auditioned season one. I went in person and I sent a video. Um, I didn't get on. I didn't even get a call back. I did audition again season five um, and I made it pretty far that year. I got to top 25. I really, really thought I had it in the bag, but then I got the devastating call that that wasn't going to be the case. I do remember feeling though, season six though, this is it, this is my season, I'm gonna have that season. Um, and then boom, fair enough, I got cast on season six. And I love my season six cast, so honestly, everything happened the way it was supposed to, and I'm so, 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 so grateful for that. So three times, do not give up. If you want it bad enough, keep trying. Who cares how many times it takes you? Keep pushing. Okay, next question, was I scared? I wasn't so much scared auditioning for it. I was excited. I really felt like I belonged there and I needed to be there. And I felt like I had a lot to offer and bring to the table. So, you know, my, my confidence overpowered the scaredness. Uh, was I scared leaving for the show? Shitless. I cannot remember another time where I felt so scared like when you are leaving you know and and having to disconnect from all the people that you love your phone all the things that are your comfort are being torn away from you it's terrifying you know i second guess myself for a moment i'm like what the hell am i doing why am i doing this i have no idea what i'm walking into i'm terrified um but you know, I reminded myself that this is something that I've been wanting for a really long time and I was here for a reason and it was my time and to trust in God's infinite plan. And I went for it. In terms of casting tips, what would I say if you're auditioning for the show or if you want to be on the show? Honestly, as cliche as it sounds, you just got to be a thousand percent authentically yourself. Stop trying to play a role. Stop trying to be a part that you think they'll want to cast you as. Think about all your character tra traits, the good ones and the bad ones, and then exploit and really get deep onto why each of those character traits are an essential part of the puzzle for the season. Don't try to be something you're not because ultimately you won't be able to fake it long term on the show. Cameras roll 24 seven. So if you're not authentically yourself, it makes for really awkward TV. So please be yourself, okay? Was I in a relationship before the show? When I first auditioned or when I auditioned for the season, I was not in a relationship, but I met Walker soon after and we started dating um, very casually at first when I got the call back and whatnot. And, you know, I kind of did say to him, maybe we should put this on hold until I get back because I don't know what's going to happen here and I don't want to disrespect you and I don't want to this, I don't want to that. Let's just, you know, break call it a break for now um because <laughs> that always works out real well um let's call it a break for now and let's just reassess when i get back but he wasn't having any of it 
he was super understanding, super supportive, super in love. Appreciated that. And I, uh, I, I loved that he had that much confidence in our relationship and that he trusted me enough with our relationship going forward. And obviously I was very respectful. We were very fresh. I think we were only like serious for maybe three months. Uh, it was a huge test to our relationship. I remember coming out of the house. He was so lovey-dovey and affectionate and touchy. And I was almost like sensory overload. Like I was like, <gasps> like I like needed space. And like, it was weird. It was like having to get to know each other all over again. I felt really bad that he was so excited and all over like cuddles. And I was just kind of like, <sighs> you know, it was a huge adjustment, but I think through that, it brought us closer together because our communication had to get stronger. The ding dongs, ding. Oh man, um, I'm so grateful for Olivia. Honestly, I could say that it was an instant connection from premiere night when we were first introduced to each other. I feel like there was just an instant vibe and we ended up deciding right away that we wanted to be bedmates. And there was just such a level of comfort and trust from the get-go and the more I got to know her the more hilarious I obviously think her sarcasm is her eye rolls <laughs> and she just kept me sane she kept me sane she kept me entertained she was my best friend in the house she's still one of my best friends um and I definitely I think she was one of the best parts of the entire experience for me want to dance wait a second mm -hmm. no wait for the mascara to dry if you dance and I twirl you around your mascara will dry faster. Yeah, I don't know about that. Okay, can we just try a dip? Olivia and I are sitting pretty this week. We managed to escape the block again. Can you teach me how to salsa? Yeah, I can. We can be a couple of ding-dongs without a care in the world. Three and four. Good. Now if you want to turn. Yeah. Okay. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Four. Why do I turn so much? <laughs> different we come from two complete opposite worlds but she's everything i need in this house she really balances me out so go on girl with your bad self yay now i'm dizzy how was slop i get this question a lot and i have the same answer every time it was horrible um what was it obviously they're not going to feed you anything that isn't going to help nourish your body my interpretation of it would be that it is like dried oats with some sort of greens concoction, but very chalky, pasty taste and consistency to it. Not enjoyable greens by any means at all. Um, yeah, it just literally like, if you had chewed a piece of chalk and the paste that the chalk makes, that is what it felt like. Um, we were allowed to have certain condiments on it, but it was a very limited list and after a while, You'd try everything and all of it started to taste the same, disgusting. And the thing about the slop isn't that like you can't do it once or twice. It's the fact that that's all you can have for the entire week. It messes with your head. It messes with your mood and your energy, especially when everybody else around you is getting to eat whatever they want. They're making really yummy dinners. Everything smells amazing. Uh, and on top of that, you are having to sleep on a hard, cold floor. You're not getting good night's sleep. Um, it just, it's, it's psychological warfare is what it is really shout out to Kayla who did it. Like, I don't know, pretty much the whole season. I feel like I did it three out of the eight weeks that I was there. And I can't imagine having to have done that more than that. Um, but I think she did like five or six weeks, but, um, I mean, she also won money. So suck it up. Um, but yeah, slop gross. Do I want it ever again? No. Next question. We get this question a lot. Um, how much of the show is scripted? How much of it is real? Listen, it is not a scripted show. Um, what I will say is like everything that you see happening is happening real time. Um, sometimes things are happening that you also wish weren't making the show, but because it's real, it's making the show. So the show is very, very real. I think what people's perception is where it's not real is like the diary room when you're in the diary room 
you are talking to someone from production um, and you know, it could be a way that they, they ask you a question. So then how you deliver the question or how you deliver the response might sound like it's scripted, but it is your own point of view. It is your own opinions. It is your own strategy. Uh, sometimes they might ask you the same question in different ways, but for, for all of that, it's all your words, all your answers. None of it is scripted. None of the fights are planned. Uh, and I'm putting you and Olivia on the block and it's best chance best for them to stay. So why are you guaranteeing them that we're putting them up? Don't guarantee people because you don't know what I would do. Okay, cool. <laughs> Every week it's just lies, lies, deals, deals, alliances. Let's make it work together. You're never going to work with any of these people. Now you're trying to commit to your word to these guys. Like, your word doesn't mean Your word doesn't mean either. And, like, no one buys it. You guys are liars. The fact of the matter is you two are a hell of a lot stronger than these two. Yeah, so I guess who's better to work with? Me and Kayla. I guess she's more likely to win out. And then turn on you. I know you're pitching really hard for Allie right now. They know exactly what I'm going to do because I've told them exactly what I'm going to do. You're so full of Ridiculous! All I hear is constant about you saying, Allie, I'm going to do this, Allie, I'm going to do that, and we're going to do this. Oh my god, you guys are freaking annoying. I don't know why we call so many house meetings. They always blow up in our faces. It's real. It's as real as it gets, man. The hardest part of being in the house, uh, I'd say for me, would be that there is literally just no privacy. Like, there's no privacy. If you want to be alone, it's really hard to be alone. And even when you are alone, you see these little cameras like zzz, 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 so you know you're not alone. Um, and sometimes you just want to run. Like, you just want to be outside, get fresh air, clear your head, but you don't have that power. Like you're surrendering that, all those things that you would normally want to do that, you know, are part of your comfort zone. Those are all ripped away from you. So I'd say that's the hardest part is not being in control of what you do day to day and not having your privacy. My thoughts on BB Can 8 before the season was canceled. Um fully honest here at the beginning I was stoked for it Jamar I felt like he was gonna get on everybody's nerves and I was living for it uh I also felt like he's a type of character that you need to get to know to really appreciate and like as a person um so I was super bummed when he left early um actually love that they went for the cool kids power alliance right away it showed that the that the season was gonna have balls. Like they were gonna be willing to make big moves from the beginning and I was super excited for that. I think where it started to take a turn for me is that it felt like it was so much of like people not wanting to be there. Like, uh, was it Carol? Carol, the first guy, I forget his name. Um, yeah, just people acting like they didn't wanna be there and that was so aggravating to me and so frustrating because I know what the audition process is like and I know how many hoops and loops you need to go through to make it and how badly people want it. So for people to be like, oh, I just wanna go home or oh, I can't do it. I understand the whole mental health aspect of it and ultimately you gotta do whatever you gotta do to make sure that you're okay internally. But it's shocking to me that you wouldn't assume that that's something that, if that's something that you deal with on a regular basis, this isn't the type of environment that you should put yourself in in the first place. Uh, but other than that, I thought it had potential. Uh, I know for a fact as well that it takes a few weeks to really get invested in the people. Um, so I didn't have like ultimate favorites yet. Jamar was one, but he left early. Hira, I was definitely rooting for Hira from the beginning there. I just thought he was a really solid dude. You can just tell when someone's like really genuine, but he was also a veto beast. I was like, let's go, buddy. My heart goes out to them for being canceled early because I know a lot of them, especially like Sheldon and Brooke, they wanted to be there. They wanted to fight. They were ready to claw their way all the way to the end, which is why I appreciate the symbolism and having them be the last people to leave the house. I see you, big brother. I mean, COVID. COVID's a bitch. What are you going to do? Will they bring any of them back? I mean, there's a few, in my opinion, that I would give a second shot to. Um, Min Lee, I would give her another shot. I would give Brooke and Sheldon another shot. Um, and I would give Hira another shot. So if you're listening, <sighs> would I personally do Big Brother again? Mm. I feel like I go back and forth about it all the time because the competitor in me that wants a shot at redemption is like, hands down, I would 100% do it again. 
But the logical side of me is like, now that I know what this whole experience entails, could I do it again? I don't know. It would be so dependent on what was happening in my life at that time. But would I like to do it again? Yes, absolutely. I want a shot at redemption. And I think I would bring a completely different energy, a completely different strategy the second time around. And I would want to see what I could do. What was my biggest takeaway out of the experience? Uh, wow, there were so many. Um, I think the biggest I'd have to say is realizing how strong I am mentally. I think I've always known that I'm strong mentally, but this experience really forced me to see that and appreciate that in myself. I, I showed myself how much I could hold it together and that was inspiring. The amount of clarity and perspective that I was able to get really being in tune with my emotions, going deep within myself and saying, okay, what do you want out of life? What do you see for your future after this is all said and done? I had no, no exter external things kind of pulling my attention. So when I sat and really reflected, I was able to go deep. So the clarity that I was able to find while away um, was huge, was very valuable to me. Who do I still keep in touch with? Um, honestly, it's really hard to keep in touch with everybody. Everybody, well, a lot of us are in different time zones. A lot of us are doing different things. Uh, we do have a Snapchat group. I stay in touch as much as I can through social media. I'd say the main people I talk to the most are probably like Derek and Paris, Johnny, Olivia, and Erica. But I love them all. Mwah! Oh, what was coming back to reality like? For me, it was extremely difficult. Uh, I feel like that little bubble that we were in had become home and then I was pulled away from that home. And all the people that understood what I was going through or what I felt like, they were all gone. It was like a safety haven that we had built and that it was all gone. And it was so much stimulus and overwhelming sensory overload when we come out just people coming out of the woodwards messaging you or like 80 text messages or a hundred DMs that you just, you can't, you can't catch up. You almost feel like you can't catch your breath. Not to mention that a lot of my castmates, they went home to their home. I didn't have a home when I came home. I had put all my stuff in storage. I had left my apartment downtown. So I was in a storage unit and I just came home to, you know, Walker's basement suite that was like 45 minutes away from downtown where all the people that I knew and loved were. Like I said, not knowing where we were at, getting to know each other all over again. It was just really overwhelming to be living with someone in a foreign space when the relationship felt so foreign. So I went through um, some emotional turmoil for sure, just questioning everything. Um, you know, I decided to let go of my real estate license and pursue a career in fitness, but that was a huge, terrifying moment that I had to go through and a huge decision that I made. Um, there was just a lot deciding whether or not Walker and I were going to move in together, or if we were just doing that out of convenience, or if we were doing that out of love and desire, there was just a lot going on. I wasn't working out. I was living out of the same suitcase I had just lived out of for the last four months. I was feeling super uncomfortable in my own skin because I gained a ton of weight uh, throughout the process. And I just like mentally, emotionally, and physically, I was completely turned upside down. And it was really hard for me to start putting the pieces back together. I think where it started to turn around was when we found this apartment. And all that took like, I don't know, it took like six to eight months to really feel like I was putting my pieces back together. Um, it was difficult, it was very challenging. And I think that that's part of the reason that I couldn't talk about Big Brother as much as people wanted me to, um, because I was just so clouded with who I was supposed to be now, what I was supposed to do now, um, what the next step was, and it was terrifying. It was overwhelming, for sure. But I'm okay now. <laughs> Ew, emotional. Um, I'm okay now. I'm okay now. And again, that strength is what got me through. So strength, good support system, amazing family and friends, um, and just patience, patience with myself and saying like, it's okay that I don't have it all figured out right now. 
you know, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Well, this, interestingly enough, is one of the biggest insecurities I've had my entire life. And it was quite, um, quite a shock to come out of the house and see the hateful Twitter messages um, and comments on my scar. This, this scar right here. All right. Um, and to be honest, I thought about wearing glasses for this video, um, but I wanted to be transparent and I wanted to be real. So this is what it is. How did I get my scar? Long story short, when I was a little girl, I fell down a flight of cement stairs and I cracked the back of my head, my nose, which was really close to my eye. Um, and about a bunch of scratches on my back. So rushed to emergency and got some stitches. The incision didn't heal properly. I used to pick at it when I was a little girl and what happened was it started to form a little bit of a lump. I grew up with the lump, left it alone. When I got to my teenage years, I got super self-conscious about it. So I asked my mom if we could have plastic surgery to just smooth it out and keep it nice and smooth. So long story short, we did like six surgeries. Um, and each time I kept getting scar tissue back, scar tissue back. Finally, a doctor said, it looks like you have some keloid scarring, which basically means there's not enough enzymes in a certain part of your body. Um, so what happens is you overproduce scar tissue and that comes back and it just will constantly continue to do that. So when I got the middle part was when they tried to do another surgery, but this time with radiation therapy. And that seemed to be working well for the keloid, but then one movement one day split my nose open and then it was like the skin was too tight. And so then the middle part of my nose scar was born. <laughs> Reading those tweets and messages and what people had to say about my scar is a little deflating, um, but ultimately it comes down to this. There's always going to be people, um, whether they're in your life or complete strangers that have an opinion or have something to say about something that you're doing or something that you have or something, or something, something that you are. And you cannot let yourself be influenced by that outside noise. You cannot let other people's opinions dictate your emotions. You cannot let other people's opinions dictate your actions, your dreams. The only thing that matters is the opinion that you have in yourself. The only thing that matters is the words that you serve yourself in here. So if those words are negative, you're gonna to continue to live a life of toxicity. But if those words are positive and affirmations, and you know hopeful then you're going to experience incredible abundance in your life and that is the only thing that should matter and that is the only thing that matters to me so go ahead make fun of my scar see if i care who okay did paris deserve to win our season yes she did deserve to win our season if she was there at the end it was because of things that she did or didn't do ultimately people like to say oh they didn't deserve to win this they didn't deserve to win that but you have no idea what it takes to be in that position at the end of the game. It is so much more than just winning competitions. It is daily decisions, conversations, intentions and efforts that were made on her end to secure that she would be there. The types of relationships she built with the different people in our house, including me, that felt secure enough with her to keep her until that point uh without her having won anything until she needed to um i mean that's honorable to to say the least and honestly she and i played very similar games so to the, to the next question who else deserved to win the game me i deserve to win the game okay who is the best alliance in bb history so the hitman obviously from bb uh, US, um, they were incredible. And Derek, I have to think, is like one of the best players to ever play the game. But there's so many amazing players that have played the game. But in terms of an alliance, I think the Hitman and from the Canadian side, I mean, I would love to say the Ding Dongs, obviously, but I have to say they killed that shit. <laughs> Pretty boys. My biggest regret, honestly, I try not to live life with regrets everything happens the way it's supposed to when it's supposed to but I will say this if I were to go back in I think I would be less safe first time around you really just want to do everything perfect and you're just like oh my god no I don't want to piss anybody off I don't want to do this I don't want to do that I don't want to risk this I don't want to risk that I feel like if I went back into the house I would just not give two 
I think I would just be like, I call people out on their shit. I'd be sassy when I felt the need to be sassy. I wouldn't think so much about whether or not I should win a competition. I would just give every competition my thousand percent. I think I would just be more aggressive. As for what's next for me, um, am I gonna do another reality TV show? I don't know. I mean, I really don't have any intention of doing it, but you never know, so never say never. If the opportunity arises and it makes sense, then heck yeah, why not? Me, I really just wanna continue to build my um, my brand, my Move with Valley brand. I'm super passionate about what I'm doing, what I'm creating, how I'm helping others, and I've always thought that I could be someone who could leave an impact on this world, um, as cheesy as that sounds. It's more more important to me to be known for something good versus just being known. Um, so I just, I wanna, that's my legacy. I wanna leave something beautiful behind. So many things that I wanna do and accomplish in this life. I guess for now, I just know that sky's the limit and I'm not gonna worry about the how, I'm just gonna worry about the why it matters to me, why it's important that it happens and just keep on pushing forward. Just keep on keeping on, baby. Mm, 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 mm. All right, team, and that is a wrap for today's Q&A. I hope this gives you a little bit of insight into one of the biggest chapters of my life, a little bit more about who I am and why I am the way I am. Um, it is always a little bit nerve wracking opening up like this in a video. So hopefully you guys receive it well. Hopefully it resonates with you. Feel free to ask me questions down below. I'll be happy to answer them back if I didn't get to your question. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and let me know and we will do another Q&A. Hey, 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 ooh. All right guys, until next time, we'll see you soon.